Right, I'm going to be talking about uh, a party that uh, Colin and Michael didn't talk quite so much about, but as I'm sure everyone here is aware, there's been a quite substantial green surge uh, over the last year or so, and um, before that. But what I've done here is just to pull out a bit of opinion poll data that I'm sure you're all familiar with this graph. The Greens have gone up um, at the same time the Lib Dem vote has declined in the opinion polls over the last year. And the, the, these Interestingly, these, these lines mirror each other, and that's something I'll, I'll come back to. Um, one of the reasons why there's been such a, a significant um, increase in support for Green Party is the Green Party is picking up members. This is a membership data for the Green Party in Wales, and, and the membership figures for uh, the Scottish Greens, which is a much smaller party, uh, is broadly similar, although the, the Scottish Green membership rose uh, quite a bit at the time of the, the Scottish independence referendum last September and shortly before that, but it's also been as close as the rise of their membership. Um, the Greens are picking up a lot of members, uh, they're picking up a lot of support in the opinion polls, and then the question is, well, well, what's, what's the implications? Why, why is this happening? What's the implication of this for, for the local elections? Um, Looking at some data from the British Election Study, it's obvious that the, the Greens are picking up support from a number of places. Firstly, the Liberal Democrats. Um, quite a large chunk of the people who are, have switched recently to the Green Party are people who voted uh, Lib Dem in the 2010 general election. Uh, the Greens and the Liberal Democrats have for many years shared a common electorate. So a lot of people who uh, vote for the Greens one year might vote for Lib Dems, the next year, and so forth, and back and forth. Uh, but there seems to have been quite a substantial shift um, away from Liberal Democrats and towards the Greens, quite possibly because uh, Liberal Democrats are no longer uh, a viable haven for protest votes. And in as much as quite a lot of the Lib Dem vote historically has been a protest vote, uh, those people are then looking for other, other parties to support the Greens or to one of their support. And as I said, they have for many years shared a uh, common electorate anyway. Um, the Greens are also picking up a substantial uh, amount of support from former Labour voters and from people who uh, also are, are generally tend to be undecided voting voters, people who don't always vote, and so forth. Um, so the reason why people are switching to the Greens is partly because the Greens are now a viable protest party. I think some people are also uh, moving away from Labour because Labour in, in some policy areas moving to the right, and so they're looking for another left-wing party, which the Greens are, and also because the, in recent uh, months in particular there's been increased concern about um, climate change. And so for all these reasons, the Greens are um, an, an increasingly attractive political party for some people. Um, now, looking at the, the survey data, it's possible to analyse who the so-called new Greens are and how they're different people who have traditionally supported the Green Party. Traditional Green Party supporters have a number of common socio-demographic characteristics. They tend to be younger uh, than average, more highly educated uh, than average, more likely to work in the public sector, more left-wing in their political views, um, and, and uh, more likely to have voted for the Liberal Democrats in, in the past. And just, you take out the people who are more recent converts to the Green Party over the course of the last year, and in most respects they resemble um, the old Greens. The new Greek Greens are very similar to the old Greens. So the Greens are basically mobilizing more of the same types of people. There's, there's very little evidence that they're, they're, they're managing to draw from different socio-demographic groups than they have in the past. They tend to be, they, they appear to be drawing more of the same, these same types of people. The only um, obvious difference between people who are recent converts to the Green Party and people who have traditionally supported the party is that the recent converts are even younger in general than the, the Green Party's um, uh, generally young support base overall. Um, so what will be the consequences uh, of all of this for uh, the uh, election results? Now, I haven't got the uh, same data set that Colin and Michael have, and they don't know that much about um, the Greens, although they, they might be able to enlighten us in q &A, so I can't make a, I'm not going to be making a prediction. Um, but certainly it is the case that if there's any major uh, <coughs> impact of the Greens surge on the election results, it's going to be the local election, not the general election. The Greens currently hold one seat in the House of Parliament, uh, Brighton Pavilion, which they have a good chance of being able to keep, but it's an ex 
extremely unlikely that they can pick up an additional four metric seats. Um, however, the Greens have been increasing their share of local authority seats for steadily for many years now. Um, and they currently hold 162 seats on 56 councils and uh, picked up an additional in, in 23 seats last year at local elections. And they, uh, on the basis simply of uh, the previous trajectory of, of steady gains year on year, we could expect that they would increase the, the seat share and taking into consideration also the green surge, we would expect that um, seat share to, to go up even, even more. Um, and the places that uh, you might want to watch if you're looking at um, particular places where the green vote in the local elections might become interesting, um, firstly Brighton and Hope, the Greens have um, led a minority administration in Brighton and Hope um, since 2011. Uh, it has been very fraught, there have been many problems in Brighton and Hope. Uh, that is also the, the, the area of the country where the Greens hold the only parliamentary seat, um, Brighton Pavilion. And it is quite likely that the Green seat share will de decrease in Brighton and Hope. Um, and people have the opportunity of voting one way in the general election and another way in the local election. And unlike most other parts of the country, it's most likely that they are generally favorably disposed towards the Greens. They'll vote for Carla and Lucas in the parliamentary, and they'll vote against the Greens on the local council. There have been a lot of problems there, not least because the Green parties don't have a whipping system. And so when you get a bunch of Greens on the council, they can all vote on different votes in however they want, and they do. Um, and this leads to problems if they are, are in control of the council. Um, other areas where the Greens stand to potentially gain support include Norwich, where they've been kicking up support steadily for a number of years. The, the official opposition, uh, 15 seats to Labour's 21, so that could be quite interesting. And then there are a number of other places where the Greens hold a, a sm small portion of the seats, but they have been making gains over recent years and, and could quite well make um, other additional gains this year. Solihull, um, the Greens are also the official opposition in Liverpool, with the, the official opposition <coughs> only four seats. Uh, but still, I mean, they, 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 they look set to, to be making gains in Liverpool. And Bristol is an interesting case because although the Greens only hold six seats, there's no overall control there, so that's a, um, quite in, in the interesting possibility is that the Greens have been gaining quite a bit of strength uh, recently in uh, Bristol. So, thank you very much.